Okay, so, yeah, okay, we're ready. Okay. Yeah, just back from a coffee run. I'm not to bore out the darn thing again. Good. Where is it? Where is it? It's been, I don't know. Uh, well, that, that kick starts it pretty well. Uh, I've updated my fiber, my fiber profile. Definitely needed serious updating. So, uh, yeah, I was actually tempted to delete the social management thing. But there's no way this well-established hermit can do such a thing. Not in today's world. That's definitely, uh... That comes down to being a basic skill, okay? That's, uh... Yeah. I mean, there, there's... That's like living in a country and not knowing how to answer the phone. For anyone that's ever lived in a foreign, in, in a country where they had to deal with a, a language that wasn't theirs, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, that's, that's impossible. You have to know how to deal with these things. Case in point, last night I got a response from one of my gigs, I got three up now on Fiverr, and um, they left a WhatsApp contact number. Now me being American, I obviously have very little knowledge of WhatsApp, okay? Um, we do our texting for free, but, you know, in Europe or the rest of them, they don't they actually have to pay for it. The only way around that is to use WhatsApp. So, they're really into WhatsApp, we're not. So, there's a big gap in there and that and the thing, so. But I always knew I was going to have to work on my WhatsApp skills. So, I told them I would contact them, and I did. Now, I didn't leave a text message, I just phoned the thing in, which I was able to do, which kind of surprised me. You know, I think the problem was I never gave it, allowed it to have access to, WhatsApp requires access to, if it asks you for access, it's a requirement. If you think you're going to be able to use the app at all without giving it access to, you're, it doesn't work that way, so forget about it. Another thing I'm learning is the reason I've always had trouble with WhatsApp. Yeah, one, I didn't want to give it access to things, and two, cultures internationally are very different. Okay, than the U.S. Like in the U.S., we we think we're very we're the salt of the earth, we're good people through and through and all that kind of stuff, and we're very nice and pleasant, but we don't see, we keep, we used to keep the dirt well hidden, or at least attempt to, right? Yeah, no more, but that's all right. Anyway, um, yeah, we were so good, at least the power structure was so good at manipulating the society that most people were clueless as far as what's really going on kind of thing, right? So that's, that's why. Um, yeah, other societies, they're not as naive as we tend to be. So they know the uglier side to life.
All right. Whereas in our country, this is a, this is a recent history kind of thing that we're dealing with now. Right? They're more cautious about letting people have access, giving people access to their existence, whatever. Like in in, in Russia, the Russians don't smile. <laughs> When you've lived underneath a system where it's been rather controlled, you know to be standoffish. Okay? You already know what the system's like and you learn how to exist in that system and yeah. Very sincere people, you know and all that kind of stuff, but intensely guarded. Yeah. Compared to the U.S., the rest of the world is intensely guarded because they haven't done as good a job as hiding reality as the U.S. has. That's why, again, now is when we're starting to have to deal with it, when the whole thing's crumbling kind of <laughs> thing, right? So, um... Yeah, if you want to use WhatsApp, you got to give it access to everything. And when you ask people for the number, that's a very personal thing you're asking. Okay, so just know that. Um, if you're not already friends w with the person, expect to get like no response or an awkward response kind of thing all right this is me processing the information again because i've always had like i said i've always had problems with it with the whatsapp because i didn't know all this background <laughs> i wasn't taking into account all this background information this other stuff so if you're going to use whatsapp for the most part, only use it with the websites that already give you that information. Because if you're asking someone for their WhatsApp number, that's a very personal thing. Other cultures are much more guarded than we are. For good reason. For good reason. Okay? So. Back to my updating fiber thing. Someone contacted me last night, left their WhatsApp contact information. I responded and said, yeah, okay, um, I'm at your disposal with all my, my, my uh, whiteboard animation skills are at your disposal and I will contact this number. And I did. This pathetic American figured out that you have to give this app all the, <laughs> all the access at once. And I had this number, and you hit that little blue icon thing, and it goes through. It's fine. Um, the other icon is the, the bubble, the, the comment bubble. Yeah, that's for the text thing. Now, when you text someone, that's it. They now have a foot in the door kind of thing. Right? Um, anyone ever into the vampire fantasies and all that kind of stuff? Never invite a vampire into your house? You just invited a vampire into your house. <laughs> That's what they're talking about. In, in when you're these predator kind of people, I'm not saying that for definite this person was a predator, but that was a that's a weird way to start a con, uh, um, um, a business thing. If if the guy if, if the person you're dealing with isn't a guy, in a lot of these societies, okay. And that's uh, that's what I'm figuring out. 
That's what I'm figuring out. So anyway, I contacted this. Well, I tried to contact it using the phone, hitting the blue phone icon, not the comment. Uh, once confronted with that option of, because I'm kind of getting a, a hang of hang of, of how this app thing, because when I did my Let's Russia thing with Marcus, that's how we stayed, because their website has the, the, everybody, all the businesses, they use WhatsApp. There's nothing wrong with that one, okay? But I mean, if it's an established business interaction thing, it's beautiful, and it works fabulous, and you can get in contact with the, and it's, an excellent uh, uh, it's just an excellent way to stay stay in contact with your people undeniable all right it is excellent but when you don't know the person you're dealing with if this person is it was the time difference that got me off guard because it said he was from the U.S. But the time difference, I was looking at the local time in it, and it said like 3 a.m. or some kind of thing like that. And I'm saying this guy's from the U.S. And now he's now I'm I'm starting to try to figure out this thing. And I even went to the um, the fiber communication do's and don'ts page. It took me a little while to find it because I knew I came across something like that. Because previously they had stated do not communicate with people beyond our message thing. And this is now, I started remembering all this when I was thinking, do I hit the comment thing now? To, and then looking at the time zone, the, the difference of the, and I said, why is this person calling me on a Saturday in the middle of the night? And giving them a WhatsApp, and specifically giving them a WhatsApp number. And so now I'm starting to feel, eh, this is kind of weird. So, yeah. No, I was going to update my, my fiber thing. Let's just say that situation made the task a, a more urgent one. So although I was actually going to start working on it, if not today, because I'm still doing all this sudden, within this week, I was going to update the thing. Just that issue, that situation brought it to the forefront. So I updated my fiber uh, profile and uh, everything. Yeah. Again, I was tempted to just go ahead and delete the social media men, but I can't. Like, especially this hermit. This is this is a basic skill nowadays, basic. So you've got to get accustomed to answering comments, to using the blocking features, to using the restriction features, all that kind of mediation kind of thing. You've got to yeah. You gotta tinker with it. You gotta chip away at it until you find something that you find manage you find manageable. That's the whole thing. Everyone has their own personality and their own situations, and you're gonna have to figure out what approach is best for you. But you definitely need to know how to restrict the comments and know how to block users if necessary and to know just this thing is going to just take experience throwing yourself out there and dealing with each situation as it presents itself like this situation i thanked him i said my skills were at his disposal i said i would con uh, contact that number and i did and no one answered the phone, and then when I looked at the time, there was, there was a good reason why not. <laughs> if he really wants my animation skills to be at his disposal, he will contact me again. Otherwise, I did my thing, and I contacted the number, no one picked up, and we're, we're good. 
and I updated my profile and we're good. And I'm just going to have to figure out how I'm going to have to handle each situation as it presents itself. And I will leave a link to the communication do's and don'ts, the fiber communication do's and don'ts. So just so you can get a, a sense of because I was expecting them to say again, do not communicate with people beyond, but it, now it doesn't say that. Now it just warns you, if you communicate beyond, we cannot guarantee your safety or whatever, whatever. if you feel uh, awkward or you know, please report and all that kind of stuff and all that. So, yeah, no, but it does no longer says do not communicate beyond our platform. So I was looking for that. And they apparently changed it. But uh, yeah, that was weird. From what I kind of sort of got the impression of dealing with WhatsApp and dealing with people and how they responded when I asked for the, how do you use this and, and what and yeah, that's there's a whole background to this WhatsApp thing and the cultures that use them and all that kind of stuff. So just case by case basis. And I will leave a link to the do's and communication do's and don'ts provider. Okay, so that's the long version, huh? Okay, so yeah, um, I've updated my uh, fiber profile and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, finding out more about uh, EPUB files, I the previous video, you know that. And, uh, yeah, oh. I wrote, scribbled down some notes as far as my strategy at this point in time. It's continuing to evolve, all right? But yeah, this is the notes I wrote earlier today. Um, strategy. February 19th, 2023. Um, number one, keep things manageable. Cap, capital letters, all right? Keep things manageable, all right? That's number one. Uh, one man show, okay? If you're the one dealing with handling everything, you gotta be reasonable about what you're able to manage, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, number two, Russian translations, yeah. All right, I already have the, uh, from KKK to CIA in the Russian version. I just found out that, yeah, it does show up. It just doesn't show up on my laptop. I got to send it to my Kindle, to my Amazon Fire tablet, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the old, I think, generation, is it fifth generation? I don't know. When it was like 40 bucks, years and years and years ago, yeah, Best Buy, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, it takes forever. And it shuts itself off sometimes. If, yeah, well, you know, you know, 40 bucks, what do you want? Okay. So, okay, so number two was the Russian translate. Number three, multilingual commercials. I put commercials in uh, parentheses. Uh, quotations, excuse me. Um, that's the, the whiteboard animation thing, the doodly thing. Okay, number four, shop issues. Because now I've got the, uh, the PayHip product page. Now I'm still going to be looking around because I still want to see if I can find something with uh, DRM protection, the uh, direct whatever management thing. Um, and no upfront fees. Okay. Um, PayHip is really probably going to be the best option, but I, I just started it and I'm still kind of looking around. Man, 
between lighting and trying not to, I don't know, trying to keep the angle decent here, whatever. All right. Okay, so shop issues. I'm still dealing with shop issues. Number five, platforms. Well, I think I've already settled the video platform issues for now. When I said platform, when I first wrote it down, it was, I was actually referring to publishing platforms. I think I'm done with StreetLib. Kobo is the only one that's been able to put, get every title I've submitted uploaded without any major issues. Uh, again, it recommends to fix whatever, but it allowed it. StreetLib, I couldn't do anything with the English version of From KKK to CI and so on. I think I'm done with them because I have enough aggravations. Um, Shinshi, supposedly they charge, but I still haven't gotten a grasp of how much. Because their power package, the one where you get the ISBN, and yes, there is an advantage to actually having an ISBN assigned to your to your title. Because um, a lot of retailers don't even want to deal with it if it doesn't have some kind of ISBN. It just apparently just makes tracking it a lot easier. So some re retailers won't even deal with it if it doesn't have it. So. If they give you the option of signing you in, yeah, go for the ISBN. But I'm still, again, I'm still not clear about how much it's going to charge me. It says 10 bucks, but is that 10 uh, a one-time fee? Is it $10 a month? I mean, what are they talking about? And they, as far as I know, they haven't charged me anything yet. But when I submitted the the other the second title, again, you're required to select a, a, a payment plan, payment option, uh, or whatever package plan thing. And again, I went with the one with the ISBN, which is you have to pay. Well, it says 9.99 euros, which is about ten dollars, right? It's almost the same. But since I'm not clear about really how much they're charging it, because it didn't specify whether this was a one-time fee or this is a monthly fee or this is an annual fee or anything, it just said $9.99, which $9.99 for what? You know, it doesn't tell you. So, but for every title, you got to go through that. So for every title, I'm being charged this $9.99. But again, for how much? I don't know. I mean, how often? I don't know. So that's it. I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole now until I figure out exactly what they're charging, how much they're charging, and all that kind of stuff, which I don't know yet. I mean, that's it. They, they make you make this selection, but then that's the last you hear about it. They don't ask for any... Uh, you know, payment, uh, inf uh, any card information or any bank information, nothing. You have to make that decision and that's the first and last you hear about it and they really don't get into any details. So it's like, so what are we dealing with then? Nothing. So I got two titles on Shinshi and I'm stopping right there until I figure out what's happening because I still can't figure it out. But supposedly they're very reputable. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. So, Shinshi, maybe they already have two titles, two of my titles on their platform. StreetLib, I think I'm done with it. Uh, Kobo, I've got all my stuff on there. There hasn't been any issue yet. So, so far. That's the one I'm happiest with, and so we're good. Uh, draft to digital. I'm sticking with them because as far as what my work actually looks like, it looks better on their, with their software, on their platform. 
Okay, so their software definitely better than anyone else's I've, I've had to deal with. And, uh, yeah. and they tell you right out there exactly who they're distributing it to and everything. So, I mean, everything's right out there from very transparent, good software, and uh, you yeah, have nothing bad to say about them. And, you, the, and the promotional thing is very easy to use. You can do that whenever the heck you want. So, so far, they're number one, as, as far as I can see. Them and then Kobo, and I don't know what to say about anyone else at this point in time. And, uh, yeah. And the video platforms, I already mentioned that. If you're not getting views, why are you bothering? The publishing platform, if you're not getting sales, why are you bothering? Okay. So for the video platforms, it's the views. For the, the publishing platform, yeah, it's nice if it was easy to use. But what it really comes down to is, are you selling anything? You know, are you making any sales at all from it? So that's obviously the, the first thing that I can do. So, yeah. And after that, I've got the uh, online gaming stuff. So... So yeah, I'm still with the online gaming, but I've got to take care of all this other stuff before I can really get into it. So that's what I'm doing now. Just, I'm trying to structure everything. I'm just trying to get everything. Smoothing. And the only other thing I, I did was what I just told you <laughs> about the fiber thing. Freelancing, attempting to delete social uh, media management, but no. You have to learn this stuff. Basic. Basic. Yeah, you're just going to have to deal with it. And just through experience, on a case-by-case -case basis, how you're going to approach all the issues that crop up when dealing with it. So, that's going to be my thumbnail. I took a picture of my profile thing on the fiber thing and put it on my LinkedIn page. That's going to be my thumbnail. All right, that's it. Um, I've got my coffees, coffee supply now. Since uh, apparently I'm going to be here at least until uh, well for I don't know. But I'm, uh, apparently I, I won't be leaving this week. <laughs> So, anyway, I had to get more coffee. Um, yeah, coffee, uh, tissue. I really laughed the first time I saw that. Traveling abroad, because instead of napkins, they had I I understand why now. It is cheaper, it is convenient, and it is, it is just... It actually makes sense. Just uh, as a paper product, it's cheaper and it's very convenient. They're right. Um, coffee prices apparently have gone up. I got the, the I'm not doing the Folgers anymore. I tried that thing. It was so bad. I, it just left an imprint. I don't know if I got a bad batch or not, but it was really really horrible so I know but the Bustello or whatever the, the Latin one I went for and got that one and uh, the instant thing and uh, it was actually a dollar more than the, the stated price on so the prices are going up and they're not keeping up with the, going around the store marking so the prices are you know I always look for the bargains so yeah or I'd go for the, the cheapest one, you know, as, as long as it doesn't taste so Because that bowl is really bad. I'm sorry. So, I went for this. Uh, the prices apparently are going up. It was, it said five something. It was six something. All right, by the time I got the one, I'll check out thing. Um, 
Yeah, the soap, uh, I'm still going to Aldi's because it's cheaper than the Target one, which is like twice as much. Um, I didn't double check, but it's usually three fifty. So, and the facial thing is usually like one fifty five or whatever it is. So that's whatever. It's still the cheapest one, but they didn't have the instant coffee, so I had to go to Target's for that. Okay, so that's my uh, <laughs> my thing for uh, writing for a living and all the issues that are coming up and all the issues you're going to have to deal with. Yeah, writing writing is the easy part. Marketing is the tricky part. And figuring out how you're going to approach it. And I'm already 30 minutes into this thing. Okay. All right. It is. I'm thinking TikTok in the back of my mind. So that's already through. <laughs> Assuming they don't ban me, right? Whatever. Okay. It is Sunday. Well, afternoon now. Uh, February 19, 2023, 12, 29 p.m. in the afternoon, somewhere in Brooklyn. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will talk to you later. Take care.